Hey one, hey all, welcome to Monday. Welcome to Countdown Day and following on from last week when we looked at the fan voted hardest to transform Transformers. This week we are going to be looking at the smoothest, most enjoyable, the easiest to transform Transformers so to speak. It's not so much easiest, it's smoothest, right? It's that, that, it's just a joy to do. Now, some people said, hey, didn't we already do this one? Not quite. What we did was Best Engineered, and Best Engineered may lend itself to um, Smoothest, but not necessarily. Just because something has the best engineering or best engineering parts doesn't necessarily mean it's the smoothest transformation. For example, um, you look at something like uh, Unique Toys Nero or New, uh, Unique Toys Peru Kill. Brilliant engineering. And a lot of people would say somewhat of a smooth transformation, but it's very intricate and very specific. Or something like um, Legacy Skyquake. There are people who have uh, really struggled with that, but the engineering is actually really brilliant. There's a lot of brilliance to how the parts move. Doesn't necessarily mean it's smooth because it's very tedious and very specific. But once you get the order of operations down, it's great. So they're similar and there are things that track the same on that list and this list, but it's not exactly the same list. So with that caveat aside, how about we hop into the latest GotBot Countdown. Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, aka GotBot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you are at it, light them up, baby. Hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Whew. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for. All of those links, they are down in the description below. Also in the description down below. And if you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we have to offer to you through spring, or of course hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member. And this is, like I said, the top 10 smoothest transformations, the ones that the fans just love. This follows on from last week's hardest. Our honorable mentions that I'm going to note right now is first and foremost, Animated Prowl. Pretty sure he appeared on Best Engineered. Didn't quite make the list for smoothest transformation. A lot of people said that original Prowl is just just butter in your hands. I can't speak to it. I've never actually handled that prowl, but I've always heard great things about it. The other takes me to a kind of a tie-ish between G1 and Titan's Return and the Jump Starters being Top Spin and Twin Twist. Here's the problem. I think that they, or at least one of them, may have had an opportunity to appear on the list, but too many people tried to vote and said the Jump Starters or said the Twins or whatever, or said Twin Twist and Top Spin. Now I get that they are the same engineering, they're the same method of transformation, but the molds do have a little bit of difference to them. And people who followed the actual rule of one person, one vote, would say Top Spin or Twin Twist. So no, they were not getting the same number of votes. And unfortunately, while I agree, I think that the Jump Starters, of course, the way that they popped up in G1 was just simple and brilliant. And I think the engineering and the nice smooth method of conversion for Titan's Return was brilliant. I had to disqualify too many votes because they were trying to vote for both. And that's not how this works. And a couple of, a couple of people said, well, you pick. That's also not how voting works. If that was the case, I would do my own list of my own picks. The vote is for you guys to have your say, but you got to follow the rules. And while I would have loved to have counted Top Spin and Twin Twist more, unfortunately, because I have to be fair to all the voters, I had to stick with the rule of one vote, one person. That said, I do think whether we're talking G1 or Titan, Titan's Return, they are splendid. So, with Animated Prowl, Top Spin, and Twin Twist out of the way, we're going to do as we always do, and we're going to kick things off with number 10, a burst. Coming in at number 10 is... Another tie! That's how we're start, starting things today with Studio Series 86 and G1. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be nice to say G1 slash G2 by way of 
Grimlock. So we had the same number of votes for Studio Series 86 Grimlock that we had for G1 slash G2 Grimlock. I lumped those together because the only difference in those Grimlocks is that one is gray and one is blue. The transformation is exactly the same, right? And that is brilliant and this harkens to it. What with the legs folding up and the tail going together, though here, instead of the tail being on the outside of the, of the leg, it's nicely tucked on the inside of the leg. Uh, the way the chest comes down and the head flips in with the wings coming out around and the dino head flipping up. The transformation of this guy is very similar to the G1, but the G1 was quick, easy. It looked like the cartoon. It was a robust robot, it was a robust dinosaur, and it was a quick, easy conversion to do. Probably the hardest part of the G1 was moving the chest into place and making sure that you collapsed the hips down. As long as you did that, everything else was smooth like butter. And for that reason, both the 86 and the G1 slash G2 Grimlock takes the number 10 slot. Coming in at number 9, we have this guy, the Legacy Evolution Armada Optimus Prime, the commander class that was extremely popular in 2023. He topped the best list of 2023 for a lot of people, and even in the fan voted list that we did here, I, I, I think he came number 2 just behind Ultra Magnus. They were neck and neck the whole way. I can't speak to this mold, it's not my Optimus, I have zero interest in Armada, however, I will say this. I have heard nothing but high praise and good things about this mold. I have seen a couple of reviews, and I do think that everything seems to work pretty darn smoothly with the guy. And it absolutely makes the original, which I think was an abomination, it makes that absolutely obsolete. It is infinitely better than that. And I've heard that the tolerances on the Legacy um, 1 is better than the... Tolerances on the fans hobby. I can't speak to that either, but I have heard a lot of tolerance issues with the fans hobby one What can I say the reputation precedes this offering and a lot of fans Absolutely love it if you're invested in Unicron trilogy, then you know what? I really think that quintessentially you probably need this prime. It's not for me but I respect it, I respect the design, I respect its existence, and for you, Unicron Trilogy fans, I respect it as your Optimus of choice. And for that reason, he takes the number 9 slot. 8 might be the most unique entry on the list, and it takes us to Titan's Return and Cerebros. Not Fort Max, Cerebros. And I'm not gonna lie, Cerebros, I get it, he turns into a head. I, I understand all of that. But there is... Something very rewarding about the way the legs just fold out and the toes fold down, very simple. Um, the way the arms fold out, again, very simple. But the one of my absolute most favorite pieces of engineering, of design, that was ever done in Transformers, in any Transformer, is that. Just folding that down, because when you have batteries in this guy, folding that down or pushing that up, engages the transformation sound right while you're doing it. It's beautiful. It's the sound along with the simplistic mechanism of transformation. And of course, though this just moves down, you have a rewarding face here and then kind of like rewarding thrusters back here. It's great. He's great. And he takes the number, what is it? Eight? Yeah, eight slot. Now, number seven is the first of three versions of Optimus Prime that appear on this list. And it's this guy. MP10. I get that it's very popular. I heard all the hype. I've heard nothing but praise and good things about it. And then I reviewed the MPP or the M MPP10, the oversized one that I think was done by Wei Jiang maybe, and I detested it. I didn't enjoy anything about it. I didn't like the transformation. I like the look of it fine. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this mold, I gotta say. And the whole reason is because I really, really detest the shoulders. The guy cannot at all T-pose. But that being said, I understand that a lot of people do give a lot of praise to this one and do find it to be so smooth that it harkens back to the G1 transformation with a lot of familiar movements. Um, a lot of people really tout the smoothness of the arm transformation. I personally found that fiddly and finicky. So, I mean, what can I say? I'm. We all know that I often go against the grain of the crowd. However, I can't argue with the crowd. Tons of votes came in for MP10. A lot of people said, hey, it doesn't get any better. Who am I to argue with the voters? Though I might not personally understand it, 
I have to say that the fans really spoke volumes when they slotted MP10 in at the number 7 slot. Now as we move from MP10 in number 7, a bot that is popular that I don't really agree with because it, it just didn't resonate with me personally, I do very much agree with number 6 by way of Transformers Prime and the Viacon Mold. Not the first edition, the uh, regular PRID, um, you know, Prime Robots in Disguise Mold, and I get it. Man, it's so wonderful. The hype here, I think, was real, at least for me, because the way the whole leg unfurls and unfolds and then snaps together and just flips up around, some might call it a version of shell forming, but in robot mode, there is no shell. It's a sleek, clean robot. There's nothing here that I dislike. Not one thing about the robot, not one thing about the transformation, and not one thing about the car. Love this mold and agree with the fans, and this guy takes the number six slot. And as always now, a hush falls over the crowd because we have reached the ever-coveted, ever-popular halfway mark. And at the halfway mark, we go to what I consider to be the golden age of modern Transformers with Titan's Return and Trigger Happy. Oh, man. Some people have said... This guy is splendid, and you know what? He would have been pretty much perfect if he had ankle tilt. I'll talk about that in a second. And I absolutely agree, but before we talk about how good this guy is, I do want to give respect to people that would put this guy on more of a worst list, because unfortunately he did have a number of QC issues. Namely, there were a number of people who said he had two of the same arm, that would make the transformation impossible. There were a couple that mentioned missing heads. That would not make the transformation impossible. And you can always put another Titan Master on it, but what a bummer. So there were a couple of issues with this. If yours was issue free, right? You were good, it was issue free, then this is a genius mold. When I heard somebody say, he'd be great if he only had ankle tilt. I said, you know what? He is great. He's magnificent and splendid. While he doesn't have ankle tilt, let's not forget the era that this came out. This guy, Canadian, cost $17.99. And now something comparable like, I don't know, I think Magnus is tremendous in the Legacy United line, but he's also, you know, $36.99. I didn't pay that. Luckily, I got mine a few dollars cheaper, but depending on where you go, regular price is $36.99 to now, if you go to Toys R Us, $39.99. Uh, and really, the only thing, the improvement is ankle tilt, because otherwise, this does everything. We have the front that folds up. He's armed to the teeth. Full articulation everywhere else. You even have to, like, turn his whole body around, the waist comes down, that flips around and comes up. These flip up over and tab in. There's a ton of moving parts here. High parts count, excellent paint, wonderful articulation from a splendid era of Transformers. Trigger Happy takes the number five slot. Following from MP10, we have the second version of Optimus Prime to appear on this list, and it's the Earthrise Optimus Prime. And I get it. Um, the only thing that I wish the Earthrise was able to do that the Siege does is I wish that these tires on the lower legs were able to fold to, like inside so that we just had blue out here, which we know can be done because of the Siege mold. As uh, they are, though, they don't really bother me. The legs, very much like the G1 Optimus Prime, except you fold down the, the toe and heel, and you actually have to snap them together. But otherwise, they just kind of move up like the G1. Then we get to the upper body. And the upper body, certainly we have the head that flips in like the G1. We, you know, we bend at the arms like the G1 and bring them back, and we bring the arm to the inside, unlike the G1, but like the Takara um, 40th anniversary reissue, these hands don't need to come up. They can flip inside quite simplistically and snugly. What I thought was the real genius with this mold, though, was how we do have the tapered in lats of his um, robot mode, but by simply flipping out a couple of pieces here on the back, uh, we're able to kind of like turn this whole thing around and unfurl and unpack the entire chest so that all of this gets hidden away. While this is a faux grill and a faux set of abs, it looks like Optimus. And with everything packed in the chest and, in, and kind of like to the back here with the front tires, it all comes down and all tabs together elegantly to still give us 
a nice boxy cab of a truck. Yeah, Earthrise Optimus Prime. And mine's been customized with some um, indigo blue uh, paint back here, some yellow up here. Yes, this is the backpack. Actually, this is a resin uh, cast of the backpack from the Centurion pack. It's painted uh, like when Optimus wears Sideswipe's backpack. And I leave it on Optimus because it makes his back look real nice and super clean. And yes, I changed the head out with the VNR Optimus Prime head. Shout out to the VNR Optimus Prime. That also had votes. Didn't appear on the list, but man, what a smooth, brilliant transformation the VNR Optimus has as well. Yeah, Earthrise Optimus takes the number four slot. And now we are into the top three, and at number three, it brings us to our third and final iteration of Optimus Prime on the list with this guy. Yeah, it's the G1. What's not to love about it? I can remember breaking my G1, which was sad, sad times. But before that, he was, of course, one of my absolute favorites. I always wished that the legs could kick forward. And admittedly, the Takara 40th anniversary one will allow the legs to kick forward, at least somewhat. It certainly adds articulation, but I mean, the dude had knees, he had die cast in the lower legs, certainly in the toes. When you would do the transformation, like the legs almost... Not only did they almost kind of spring back on their own, but when they did, they went together to make the back of the truck. And when you push them down, they kind of automatically came apart to make uh, his legs in robot mode. So the legs were brilliant and simple. Then we get to the movement of the upper body. And the head was a simple flip inside. And then we had the arms where the shoulders came back. Bend at the elbow and push him in. It was so smooth. The only thing that was a bit of a bummer with it was when you had to take out the fists and put them in the chest window, right? And if you had the version that for some reason had no plastic in there, you were risking them falling out. I don't know why they've done any versions with no plastic in there. It was weird. However, again, it looks like the uh, upcoming Takara version will fix a few things. They're going to articulate the shoulders more so that he can T-pose and swing out from his body. And it looks like instead of the fists coming off, this time there will be a rotation mechanism so that they go to the inside and his lights, I suppose, uh, will be on the outside. So, like, things that I wanted to see years and years ago, way back in 1984, 1985, when I had my G1 Optimus, it looks like now, some 40 years later, Takara is finally doing. I don't think I need to go back in time personally and get a G1 Optimus, but it's the thing that started everything. It's the thing that made us all fans originally. It's the thing that really is the kind of quintessential piece of Transformers. Even kids growing up that weren't Transformers fans, man, pretty much everyone had G1 Optimus Prime. And if you didn't have that one, you probably at least handled it, fiddled it, owned some version of a reissue there uh, after. Yeah, it gets reissued because it's popular, because it's smooth, and because it's excellent. And for that reason, G1 Optimus Prime takes the number three slot. Ooh, buddy, it is difficult to top number three being G1 Optimus Prime, but we're going to try with Kingdom Cyclonus. Man, whenever you talk about good transformations, whenever you talk about the best of an era, whenever you talk about the best of Kingdom, whenever you talk about um, the best Jets, whatever, Kingdom Cyclonus is really um, a testament to just how good engineering can be and pulled off at a reasonable price point. This guy has the mass, he has the parts count, the engineering, the smoothness, the articulation, everything to be a wonderful Voyager. One of the best of a long time. A shame parts on him yellow. That should not have happened. A shame that it does. But I suppose if you have the selects one, you don't really have that issue. Wow. Just wonderful. Just beautiful. And he takes the number two slot. Now Cyclonus easily could have been number one because number one is separated from number two by one vote. Real, real close. At some points, Cyclonus was number one. At some points, this was number one. I agree with Cyclonus. I'm not a huge fan of number one, though I have the mold a few times. And there's a bit of an alternate version of it that I personally prefer, but I know it's not nearly as popular as the Siege Sideswipe mold. I don't have Siege Sideswipe because I didn't like the Cybertronian mode. Uh, this is, I call this guy Lambor, even though this is G2 um, um, Sideswipe. 
Some people said the Siege Earthrise mold, but they're not the same mold. The Earthrise is an Earth mode and slightly molded differently. And since this was about smooth transformations, I asked those same voters, which one is the smoother transformation? This, or did they make mold changes that made the Earthrise one smoother? I don't think the Earthrise one is smoother than this, but I prefer it because I prefer the alt mode. I also do not like the feet. I, I've said this before, I always find that they're scary tight. Some of the molds, they are tolerance be better than some of the other molds. I do like how the arms kind of go in. I do respect that. But a lot of people said, look, I do this in the dark. I do this with the lights off. I do this with my eyes closed. Um, I Much like I feel like with the um, Siege Seeker mold, I never ever get tired of getting that mold, most recent being Nacelle. A lot of people said, look, I have multiples of this version and I don't feel like I was ever taken advantage of with any purchase I made. I feel like I got my money's worth every single solitary time with Siege Sideswipe. Whether you're talking about Tiger Track, or Deep Cover, or the other Deep Cover, or this guy, or Red Alert, or whatever. Yeah, it's hard to argue with the popularity of Siege Sideswipe, and he took the number one slot. And that's it, we've gone from 10 down to 1 once again, and other ones that had votes include the original Beast Wars Optimus Primal, the classic Starscream, Combiner Wars Dead End, Polar Claw had a vote, that was nice, um, Armada Tidal Wave, the original Armada Tidal Wave. You know what? I reviewed that, and yeah, the transformation on that is excellent, it's so, so nice. Um, Studio Series Brawl, very interesting transformation there. Uh, Core Soundwave, G1 Fort Max, Animated Lug Nut, uh, one vote from our buddy Matt, um, from Transformers Talk Raw for 86 Hot Rod. I think he was just razzing me there because he knows I'm not a fan of that guy. Uh, Studio Series, Rise of the Beast Optimus Primal, Perfect Effect Optimus Prime, I, I'm assuming they mean the inner core robot that's used for like God Ginrai or whatever. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. R.I.D. Um, Optimus Prime, R.I.D. 2001 Optimus Prime, I should say. Earthrise Skywarp, um, Cyberverse Deluxe Bumblebee, Earthrise Sky Lynx, Rise of the Beast Rhinox, the mainline one. Um, G1 Scattershot, yes, I love G1 Scattershot. Gigawatt, which I guess is a play on the uh, Siege mold for Sideswipe. Uh, Last Night Voyager Megatron, New Age David, uh, that's their Optimus Prime. Um, G1 Goldbug, Cybertron Optimus Prime, G1 Afterburner, yes, yes, after my own heart for sure. Legacy Drag Strip. Uh, G2 Laser Optimus, Legacy Laser Optimus, Legacy United Laser Optimus, I guess I, you could call him too. G1 Huffer, um, what else? Uh, d -d 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 MP Ultra Magnus, G1 Jetfire, Transart, Transmetal Optimus Primal, uh, d -d 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 Beast War Snapper, Legacy, Beachcomber, Power of the Primes, Beachcomber. Um, and, uh, who is that? Oh, G1 Double Dealer, Age of Extinction, Amazon, exclusive leader class Optimus Prime. Uh, Legacy United Chase, Hegemon, somebody voted for Hegemon, that is the uh, Toy World's version of Megatron. It's the Megatron that I always use as my Megatron. Siege Spinister Mold, oh, so good, so, so good. Classics Jetfire, um... Earthrise, Starscream, Combiner Wars, Hot Rod, Age of Extinction, One Step, uh, One Step, Grimlock, Age of, uh, sorry, One Step, yeah, wait, Age of Extinction, One Step, Grimlock, uh, Smash, I think it was Smash and Change, Grimlock, um, from Age of Extinction, G1, Power Master, Optimus Prime, G1, Soundwave, uh, the new Tiger Hawk. I can't speak to that. I don't have it. Certainly not yet. Um, 86 Magnus. Uh, G1 Override had a few votes. That was a nice at a left field one. Earthrise uh, Sandstorm. Kingdom Wheeljack. Vector Prime. Ectotron. G1 Blaster. Titans Return Chrome Dome. The original Rat Trap. Uh, Blur. Classics Hot Rod. Actually, I really like that guy. Um, the Netflix Soundwave. Legacy Override, G1 Starscream, uh, and Kingdom Tigatron. Those and even more. Whoo! What a furious round of voting. But now, 
Last week we looked at the hardest, now we've looked at the smoothest. Did your favorites make the list or not? I appreciate you guys coming by, giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon, see what we have to offer to you through spring, or of course hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member. While you're at it, please hit the subscribe button and stick around, have some fun with us here on the channel. And don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single day, you right there, you do make a difference in the world. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way right here inside the videos.